what if somebody walked up to you and said, okay, how do I get to know God? How do I know God personally? What would you tell them? If you, if you want to know God, I want to uh, just, just talk to you about how to get into this relationship with Him because it's basically a four-step process. It's a process and the Bible, right here, the, this book, basically tells us what it means to have this connection with, with the living Lord. Here's this process about, about what it takes um, to know God, and it's, it's very easy to explain. The first one is this. The first one is, is the fact that God loves you and has an awesome plan um, for your life. That's, that's the first step in this process of understanding what it means to know God. The Bible says, for example, in John 10, it says that God loves us and that He loves us so much that He has this plan that's abundant for everybody's life. So check this out. God has an agenda for everybody's life that's just phenomenal. Yet most people don't uh, experience uh, God's irrational love, nor do they experience his, his great plan. Most people are not experiencing God's plan. Now, why is that? Here's, here's the second part of this process. It's, it's because of uh, S-I-N, sin. Um, the, the, the Bible says that, um, the Bible says that man has sinned. Here's what sin means. Sin is simply, uh, okay, it's like this. Here's a, here's a target. Okay, if, if you fired an arrow and you, and you wanted to hit that target, hit the, hit the bullseye, and the arrow went, went over here, you would miss the mark. That's the mark in the arrow, missed the mark. That's what it means to sin. We've all missed the mark. We have, we have fallen short. So, so God loves you, it's the first thing. Second thing, um, um, man has sinned and our sin, I mean our rebellion, as I sometimes say, our junk, our funk, uh, our baggage, our negative attitudes, our moral scorecard, our sin has uh, separated S-E-P-A-R-A-T-E-D, it's got to be right, yeah. Separated us from God and the plan that He offers us. So man has sinned and our sin has separated us from, the God, from, from God and the plan that He offers. So the Bible says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So the wages of sin, in other words, that's the payment of sin, is death. If we got what we deserved, it would be death. Sin leads to death. Sin has to have a payment. Also, um, in, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now that's a, that's a, um, a huge one because every single person has sinned. I mean, you sinned, I've sinned, everybody is messed up and our sins have separated us from God because you've got, you, you, you've got this right here. Okay, you've got, for example, let me, let me draw like this, this cliff. Here's this chasm. Okay, here you've got man. This, this represents man. And I'll draw a little stick figure, you <laughs> and me, all right. That's man on this side of the cliff. See the cliff right there? Okay. And here's God over here. So you got man and God. Our sin has separated us from God. That's what's caused this, this separation, this, this cosmic chasm, our sin. Man's tried to bridge this gap. Uh, between himself and God. Some people say, well, 
I'll be really philosophical. I'll study the great thinkers, Plato and Aristotle, and uh, I mean, it's fine, but it falls short. Others say, well, I'll uh, try to be a good guy or a good girl and have all of these good works and give to, to the poor, but that falls short. So the philosophical plan doesn't work. The good works plan doesn't work. Some say, well, I'm just going to be really religious. I'm going to go to church all the time and read the Bible and get, and, and, and get confirmed and, 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 and baptized and all that. You still fall short. Because see, even after our best day, even after my best day, I fall miserably short. I'm a natural born sinner. I mess up. So if we got what we deserved over here, it would be eternal separation from God. Why? Because God is, is holy. Now that's a huge word, holy. Really it means God's standard of goodness is perfection. Well here is the great news. Um, I'll do it right here. Number three. God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. Thus, Jesus paid for our sins and reconciled us to God. We're reconciled to God through Jesus. It's something that we totally and completely don't deserve. In fact, the book of Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Let me show you this verse. For it is by grace, I'll talk about that in a second, that you've been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves, it's the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. It says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Well, that's the whole plan thing, and, and that's God's awesome agenda. Well, God saw this, the sin, and again, God can't wink at sin because God is holy. So, so God did something. God sent His only Son to die on the cross for all of our sins. Now, now you, you're talking about heavy. Wow. So, think of Jesus as a bridge. Let me, let me, let me kind of draw, yeah, I'll just draw a cross here. The cross is the bridge. See that? Think about it. Jesus took all of the pain, the guilt, the, the, the remorse, the conflict, everything we've ever thought wrong, done wrong in the past, present, and even in the future. Jesus felt that on his life. And the scriptures say, right before he died, he said this, it is finished. In other words, the work has been done. It's been done. So, the fourth thing is this, and I'll come back to Ephesians in a second. The fourth thing is, you know, it's our choice. You know, we either um, receive this amazing gift or not. Now that now that's heavy. I mean, some people say, well, you know, I have doubts. I mean, I'm not sure totally and completely about this deal. If you show me somebody who doesn't have doubt, I'll show you someone who has no faith. Uh, a doubt means you have faith. So now it's our choice. We either receive this or not. When, when I um, give you, like for example, this is a great pen. This is a, uh, uh, a Mont Blanc pen. I collect pens and I spoke somewhere and um, um, someone gave me this um, after I spoke. They said, hey, I know you like pens. I want to bless you with this. Here's this pen. Well, when, when someone gave me this nice pen, this Mont Blanc pen, it demanded a response. I either said, okay, I I'll receive it or I'll go, no, nah, I don't want it. Now I'd be an idiot if I said, no, I don't want a Mont Blanc pen. I mean, a Mont Blanc pen's a great pen. I said, thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I received it. So, so that is the way this situation is. We either receive it or not. Do you want you know the outline of the Bible? 
the Bible is about these four things. That's, that's what it's about. And you can be like, well, you know what? I don't, I don't know if I really believe that. Well, just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not true. I could say, I don't believe in gravity. I just don't believe it. But you know what? If I let go of this Mont Blanc pen, it's going to fall. But I don't believe gravity. I really, you know what? Fine. I have a choice to either believe in gravity or not. But you know what? The pen's going to fall. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about joining some church. I'm not talking about being a Catholic or a Baptist. I'm not talking about being an Episcopalian or whatever. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with Christ. And the question is, have you made this decision? Have you made it? Well, okay, Ed, how do I make it? Just, just simply by saying this. In fact, let's say, for example, it's like a contract, you know. You, you become a believer by, by, by basically saying, you know what? I believe, God, that you love me. And, and I admit to you that I'm a sinner. And I turn from my sins and turn to you. I acknowledge the fact, and to the best of my ability, I believe that you, God, sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for all of my sins. I turn from my sin and turn to you. I ask you, Jesus Christ, to come into my life. I give you everything I am and everything I'll ever be. If you, if you say that, the moment you, you articulate those words, this, this uh, cosmic transaction takes place. All of your sin, all of the shame, all of the guilt is transferred to Christ's shoulders. And at the same time, His forgiveness, His righteousness, His love, His, His forgiveness is, is deposited into your life. It's, it's the best transaction in the world. Because the moment I wrote my name on that line, the moment I made that decision, that transaction took place. Okay, here's, here's, here's the contract right here. I'll make you up one right there. And, and here's, here's the pen. You either sign it or not. It'll be the greatest thing you've ever done in your life. Don't delay. Don't put it off. Um, hey, thanks for talking to me today. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having a cup of coffee with me as we've heard about the most important thing in life, how to know God. And to know God, it's all about Jesus.